As we all may remember from our days in Sunday school, amongst the sacraments of our church, the mysteries as we call them in Greek, there is the sacrament of holy orders. And the holy orders encompass the rank of deacon, of presbyter, and of bishop. And that sacrament is always celebrated within the context of a divine liturgy, since those officers relate directly to the celebration of the liturgy and the offering of the gifts. In the case of the bishop, the ordination takes place at, before the beginning of the liturgy, since in essence it's the bishop who officiates, oversees the celebration of the Eucharistic gathering. And in the ancient church there were bishops in each of the churches, but as the church grew and that was less the case, the office of presbyter was firmly identified in its present form. And that ordination takes place at this point in the Divine Liturgy, after the entrance of the gifts. And an ordination of the deacon takes place later in the Divine Liturgy, right before almost the distribution of Holy Communion, because it is the responsibility of the deacon to assist the celebrant in the distribution of, of Holy Communion. And so at this time, the candidate for ordination to the presbyter reads a confession of faith and a few words, and then we will proceed with the ordination before we proceed then with the consecration of the holy gifts. Your grace, your grace, reverend fathers and beloved brothers and sisters, this is the day the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today, indeed, I stand before you and God, and I tremble with fear. In a little while, my humble and unworthy person will approach the Lord's holy altar to be ordained to the holy office of the priesthood. Άγιον Πνεύμα, να κατευθύνει, φωτίσει, ενδυναμώσει και καθοδηγήσει τα, βή τα βήματά μου στο νέο τούτο υπούργημα της Ιεροσύνης, που η χάρη του Θεού επεφύλαξε για μένα τον ανάξιο δούλο Του. Από τότε που γνώρισα την αγάπη του Θεού και της Εκκλησίας Του, ήταν κρυφό μου όνειρο να αξιωθώ μια μέρα να γίνω ένας των υπηρετών Του προσφέροντας τις περιφρές μου υπηρεσίες στο ναό μου. Όχι γιατί ήμουν άξιος τέτοιας Θεόθεν Αποστολής, αλλά επειδή πίστευα αχράδαντα ότι η χάρη του Θεού θα με αξίωνε να γίνω ένας δούλος του Κυρίου. Και να που σήμερα η επιθυμία μου αυτή, με τη δύναμη του Θεού και τις ευχές και προσευχές του πληρώματος της Εκκλησίας Του, γίνεται πραγματικότητα. Εύχομαι ο Κύριος να αντικαταστήσει την αδυναμία μου με υπεράνθρωπη δύναμη, την άγνοιά μου με απεριόριστη νοημοσύνη, που θα με βοηθήσουν να ανταποκριθώ στο κάλεσμα Του, που δεν είναι τίποτε άλλο από το ρήμα του Κυρίου προς τον Πέτρο. Είμαι τα πρόβατά μου. Today marks the end of a long journey for myself. A journey that began when I was a young man being brought to church by my mother and asking her what, what the strange hymns mean that are being sung. This intrigue and curiosity filled me with awe, 
when I first entered the altar at 12 years old in St. Demetrius of Astoria. There, I was mentored by my elder and Yelda now Pablos Metropolitan of Kozani. I learned from him the main job of the priest is to pray for the souls of the living and the repose in the divine liturgy, to be humble and walk the walk. He never faltered in his responsibility to the souls he was entrusted with. He always led by example. His efforts have also helped fortify the church in New York. There are many here and in the city that were once his spiritual children that are now clergy, chanters, and spiritual leaders. Today's sweet blessings would not come to pass if it were not for my sweet mother's faithful upbringing. Her example allowed the seed of God to be planted in my heart. She taught us to fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. She enrolled us in the Greek Orthodox School of St. Demetrius in Astoria. This is where my sister and I were exposed to our Hellenic culture and Christian religion. Even when we lost our dad, my mother found a way and worked day and night to keep us enrolled so that we remain connected to the Greek Orthodox community. Her spirit and self-sacrifice will always be a source of strength for me. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And the Lord sent me many angels in my life, many who are here today. My precious Diakonisa, wife, Katerina. She is my rock. She keeps me grounded. She reminds me to be patient and go with the flow. She brings out the best in me. She makes me work a little harder and go that extra step. She inspires me to reach outside my comfort zone. She holds my heart in her hands, and I have never felt more at peace. Katerina's parents deserve my eternal gratitude for their shining, faithful example that is now in both our lives. It is not good for man to be alone. We shall make a, a companion for him. God spoke these words and then fashioned Eve out of Adam's rib. She is my Eve, and the Lord has blessed us bountifully ever since we met. Your grace, I am grateful for you. It is with you that I began my new journey toward the priesthood about two years ago. Your guidance and support have comforted me a great deal. My family and I, the Church of St. George, and the Greater Church owe you a debt of gratitude. We will pray for your many years of spiritual health in Christ's service. My dear friends and family have come from very far away to be here today, and I will be forever moved by their sacrifices, love, and prayers. My sister Rula and my brother-in-law Chris, their love and support got me through many hard times. My nephews Yanni and George are the two brightest stars shining in my heart. Both have worked transformative miracles within my soul, and I want them to know it. They have made my life so beautiful. My clergy friends and chanter family glorify God with me always as we continue to serve our Lord and His people. Sofia, Eleftheria, Strati proved a valuable champion team for many years. With the addition of my Diaconisa and, of course, the Holy Resurrection Choir, we praise the Lord with much fervor. These connections can never be severed because the Lord said, Where two or more are gathered in my name, I will be there with them. My Holy Resurrection family has helped me stand firm against many adversities. Serving the families there, and especially the youth, has been an impactful experience. They have helped chisel the Lord's countenance inside my heart. The Brookville Parish proved the incubator for the past 11 and a half years in which Deacon Neophytos was born on September 7, 2019. The relationships built there will last a very long time. I am especially grateful to the Parish Council and Philotokos members through their service, I learned what it means to support the holy office of the priesthood. <laughs> I recently was welcomed by a loving presence here in the community of St. George. These individuals have been nothing but welcoming. I pray that I will serve them and lay my life for them in a manner that is pleasing to God. Greater love has no one than this, that, than to lay down one's life for his friends. We are honored to be allowed to call this church home. Now, with our new family, we will fight the good fight. With everyone's support and witness, I face the Almighty, unworthy though I be, 
to boldly approach without fear of condemnation or judgment. Behold, I approach our immortal King of God. My dear Deacon Neophytos, a few months ago you were ordained a deacon, and perhaps in the mind of those around you and in your own, that was the most significant step from being a layperson to an ordained individual. But in essence, it's today's ordination that really is that transformative step. For as a deacon, you could do nothing but assist the priests around you with the various services. But after today's ordination, you will be the one who, on behalf of this community of St. George, will offer the gifts and consecrate them. And as testament to that, after the consecration of the gifts, I will take the amno, the lamb, the part that we believe is transformed into the body of Christ, and place it into your hands as a powerful, tangible expression of the awesome responsibility you accept today as a priest. You carry in your hand the body of Christ, which is this congregation of St. George. And it is your task, my dear deacon, to serve them as Christ served those around him. And as we heard in the gospel reading, which you read earlier, a gospel reading that we read today on the feast day of St. Nectarios, you have to be like that shepherd who lays down his life for that of his flock. And like the good shepherd, you have to go out and find the lost sheep, and perhaps those who have distanced themselves from this church, and to embrace them in the love of Christ and of his Orthodox Church, and bring them all together as one community. I'm sure that as a student, you have the book of St. John Chrysostom on the priesthood. Six treatises. And I would encourage you every year, at least one time, to take this book and to read it. Because it's a powerful reminder to us clergy of the significance of our role as a clergyman and the effect we can have on the people around us. And as you can see, I have one section marked out that I like to read quite often. Where St. John Chrysostom uses imagery of a captain of a ship. In other words, we know the church is a ship and Christ is the pilot, but we represent him. And St. John goes on to say that if somebody was approached to be the pilot of a ship, the captain of a ship, carrying a very valuable cargo in the dangerous waters of the Mediterranean, that individual would be frightful of accepting that responsibility and perhaps run the other way because he knew of the awesome responsibility he was accepting. And the comparison is to us who have accepted to enter into the Holy Priesthood. We carry also a sacred and precious cargo, the souls of all those around us. And St. John goes on in this little story that he talks about the ship, about the dangers of being the captain of a ship in the turbulent waters. And he's talking about here a sea, but it's a figurative one. And we also, as clergy, are captains of a ship that's going through its own turbulent waters and a society that has become more secular, more anti-Christian. Our people have become almost lukewarm in their faith. We see a decrease in attendance, not just in our church, but in all churches. We hear people saying that they don't feel the importance of belonging to a church, but are spiritual. Now, I don't know how they can reconcile being spiritual and believing in God and not believing and not participating in a worshiping community, which has always been from the day that Christ established the church, the expression of Christianity and of being spiritual and of belonging to the body of Christ. But then he goes on and he talks to us, especially as clergy. And he cautions us about the dangerous rocks that are in that sea that could shipwreck the ship where captain. And he talks about being 
cautious not into falling into the temptation of anger. Sometimes we clergy, because we're human beings, sometimes anger does come out and we have to learn to not fall into that temptation as difficult as the situation is. We know that Christ really never angered except for a couple of occasions and that was when he was dealing with the chief priests and the Pharisees. And why was his anger raised to another level? Because he was counting people who were hypocrites and people who were hard-hearted. Okay? And you may encounter those people, but rather than respond to them that, embrace them with your love and soften their hearts so that they open themselves up to Christ's love and your attempt to bring them closer. And he cautions us about envy and strife and slanders and accusations about being glad when a brother priest falls and being jealous when one is successful more than we are. And these are sometimes things that I as Chancellor have encountered amongst our clergy and I would hope and pray that all of us as brothers would realize that we are there to lift each other up and to do what we can to support each other as difficult as our mission is as clergy of the Church of Christ. St. George has gone through his own difficult few years with a number of different priests. And so you come to a parish that's thirsty, for first and foremost, for love. And I would encourage you to do all you can to embrace all of the people, regardless of where they're at and what they're doing, Christ never discriminated against people. He <coughs> approached the sinner, he approached the sick, he approached those who were blind, he did everything to embrace as many people as he could in his embrace, and that's your first responsibility, is to follow that example of him, is to embrace people with love. It's also your responsibility to bring them closer to Christ by the way you live your life. And this is something that I always remind somebody that I'm ordaining. Our people will overlook our shortcomings as human beings. If our Greek isn't that great, if perhaps our voice isn't that great, if we make a mistake here or there, the one thing they're not going to forgive is if we're hypocrites. And if we preach one thing and we practice something else. And that was a very powerful thing that came to my mind one time when a deacon asked me, Your Grace, what's the most difficult thing about being a bishop? And you know in my position as chancellor, there were a lot of difficult things, but my response to him was, practicing what I preach is the most difficult thing, something that you always have to constantly remind yourself. If I'm expecting them to do it, then I should be setting the example for them. And these are a few things that I wanted to share with you at this moment as we will lead you into the altar and two fathers and then two others and two others will take you around the holy table and invoke the prayers of the prophets and of all the saints and then finally beseech God to send down his Holy Spirit upon you that he fill those things that are deficient in you and help you overcome any human weaknesses you may have as a human being and I would encourage the faithful of this community to embrace you with their love and to stand by your side and to support you. Today it's almost like a marriage. I mean, we do the Isaiah quote about like we do at a wedding. In essence, today is a marriage. You're being married to the community of St. George. And just as a couple supports each other and understands each other and loves each other, that, I hope, is the relationship that you will enjoy with the community of St. George. Because sometimes our people are a little too critical. It's impossible yeah. for one man yeah. to please every parishioner. So every parishioner has to understand the challenge that you have as the parish priest, as the father of this community, to strike a healthy balance about what is really needed in this community of St. George, and to embrace all of them, and for them to embrace you as their new father. And I'm sure I speak on behalf of all the fathers who have come from near and far, that our prayers are always with you, and that we will always be there if ever you need us to be an ear for you to speak to or shoulder to lean on 
as you move forward at this most sacred moment as you begin a new chapter in your life. I
pure and blameless for the presbytery. Let us pray to the Lord. Yeah. 